this video, we are going to talk about the test taking strategy to help you score Q50 plus on GMAT Quant. Now, all of us know that GMAT is an adaptive test. Okay, and the first few questions play a very, very important role on the test. Okay? Now, if you look at this ESR part of the student, the student has scored a 48 on Quant, which is a pretty good score. Okay, now this person has uh, got 86% accuracy in the first quarter and 86% accuracy in the second quarter. So each area is a quarter. Basically, a quarter on GMAT represents seven questions. Okay, so basically, what happened is this student got one question wrong in the first quarter and one question wrong in the second quarter okay now let's look at the esr report of the second student okay and this is my esr report by the way so if i look at this student again in this case the student did not get anything uh, wrong in uh, the first quarter so the first quarter was all correct and in the second quarter i got one question wrong all right so it is very very important in fact uh, this is my first tip to you and note it down if you want to uh, focus on the first 15 questions on gmat the first 15 questions are very very critical okay and i'll elaborate that through this probably this first student who made a mistake in the first quarter could have made a silly mistake and let me go to the next slide to make you uh, understand what really happened let us now look at the effect on difficulty level of the questions that the two students get, got so on the left side let's look at the difficulty level of the question that the first student got who scored a q48 so on the y axis you have the difficulty level and on the x axis you have the various quarters so we'll, we'll first focus on the first two quarters itself okay which is on the left side of this line now let's look at the difficulty level of the questions of the second student which is me by the way so this was the difficulty level now if you see let us see the difficulty level of the first student so in the first quarter the difficulty level of all the questions is basically represented by a green uh, circle so the green circle lies somewhere over here and if i draw a line it lies very close to the medium difficulty level now what about this second student the the most the questions that he got were over here uh, this is the green dot or blue dot because everything is was correct in this case so that if i take it on the x y axis it is somewhere over here it is slightly higher than the medium difficulty level so if you see there is a uh, big difference between the kind of questions the first student got and the second student got so it was slightly below medium okay and the difficulty level of this student was slightly above medium and what is the only difference the only difference is that this student did not get any question wrong so all questions were correct for this student and this student got one question wrong in the first set which is the first seven questions so this is the difference that the first few questions create see GMAT is not just adapting after every seven questions. It is probably adapting after the first three or four questions itself. And the first student probably made a silly mistake in the one of the first few questions, which is first three or four questions. So that is how heavily you can be penalized by for making a silly mistake in the first three or four questions. So ensure that you are focusing a lot on the first set. It is very, very critical for you to do that because if you don't do that, GMAT will reduce the difficulty level. And obviously the more difficult questions you get, the higher your score is going to be. Okay, so now let's look at what was the attempt data of these two students in the rest of the quarter. If you look at the accuracy in the third quarter of both the students, you will see that their accuracy is identical in third and also in the last quarter. So where like the difference if you see the difference was only in the accuracy of the first quarter the first student got a question incorrect in the first quarter maybe because of a silly mistake and the second student did not get any question wrong in the first quarter and see the difference a 48 and a 50 okay so what does it tell us it tells us that you have to be very careful with the first few questions now in my opinion you should be very careful with the first 15 questions on the test okay what i mean by being careful is that you do not mark answers in hurry draw the right inferences from the questions if required spend 10 seconds or 15 seconds extra to check your answers okay and remember you're not going to get the first 15 questions right just because you are being careful on the day of the test you have to make sure that you build the habit of doing so the first 
two sets are generally going to have easy and medium difficulty questions mostly okay at, at at the maximum they will give you some of the medium hard questions so you need to make sure that when you are preparing you get the easy and medium questions right for every topic okay for every topic you need to get this done even if it is permutation combination even if it is geometry whatever it is you need or algebra or any qualities you need to get the easy and medium questions right for every topic that should be a goal now if you have done this well after that even if your accuracy is uh, around 50% you will still end up with a very good score in my case if you look in the second and the uh, third and the last set if i look at my average accuracy your my average accuracy was somewhere around 65% Okay, so I was getting two out of every three questions right. Okay, even then I ended up with a 50 score. Now, let me uh, take you through another use case where a student did not have a high accuracy of 65% in the last two sets and see what was the result for that particular student. So, let's look at that as well. So, here is the case. What about last 15 questions? So, I am taking the second case same. This is uh, same ESR and I have changed the first case slightly. Okay, so if you look at this first case now, uh, focus primarily on the accuracy of the student in the last two sets. If you look at the average, average accuracy is just 50%. Okay, even then the student got a 48 on quant, which is a really good score. Okay, again, I understand it is not as great as a 50 or a 51, but 48 is still a good score. But he only had 50% accuracy in the last two sets. So this shows that even if your accuracy is slightly less in the last two sets, you can still manage to get a high score on quant. And let me tell you one more thing. There is one more difference between this student and me, my scores. So this student in the second quarter had an accuracy of 71%, okay, which was slightly lower than my accuracy. I'm sure if the student matched up the accuracy to 86% over here, somehow managed to get an 86% over here as well, he would have ended up with a 49 for sure, even with just 50% accuracy in the last two sets okay and in my case the accuracy was somewhere around 66 percent so see the last two sets are not creating much of a difference they do create if they do matter i'm not saying you get all of them incorrect but the idea is even if you are able to maintain 50 percent or 66 percent somewhere around that much of accuracy in the last two last 15 questions it will still do the job for you the main thing over here is to get the first 15 right you have to get the first 15 right if you are looking at a high score on GMAT. So that is my test taking strategy for you. So remember, all you need to do is ensure that you are getting the easy and medium ones right for every topic which is out there. Practice so well that you do get every uh, easy and medium question right. Now, one mistake that many people do is that they don't study a concept at all. For example, many people dread concepts like permutation combination, coordinate geometry and functions. Now, this is a very, very big mistake. If you have understood how the algorithm works, we have understood that easy and medium questions are very important. You cannot get them wrong. So at least build the skill to get a easy and medium level question correct from any topic, any topic that you get, make sure that you build that skill. So how do you understand in which topics your uh, easy and medium questions are going wrong or in which concept, uh, topics your concept gaps are there? Now one easy way to know that is look at your error log. Now if you are a GMAT with student that is easy. We kind of track your data on the platform itself. You get to see when you come to the dashboard you can see in which areas what are your top areas to improve in which section. You can come to each area see exactly what your skills are in individual topics. So make sure that you identify wherever these concept gaps lie. Okay, so for example, you can see in these areas, the students had concept gaps. So it is important that you identify these areas like circles, quadrilaterals and polygon and work on these areas. And another indication of a concept gap is a low accuracy in 500, 600 level question. So for example, over here, you can see the different accuracies and you have to see wherever your accuracy is low in 500 and 600 level question. That's where you definitely need to work on your concept gaps. Now, how do you work on your concept gaps? So there are multiple stages involved in that. The first step is ensure that you learn the concepts properly. Now that can be done by going through the relevant topic. So let's say your concept gaps exist in circles. 
So go through the relevant topics. Again, if you are on GMatris, you don't need to worry about that. In fact, our tool will automatically give you those concept videos in the right place for you to access. Make sure that you learn the concepts first. And then in the second step, get your expertise in easy and medium question. Build expertise in those two questions, these two question types. Uh, Again, whichever material is available with you, filter out the easy and medium questions and do them. If you are on GMatris, again, that's very easy for you. You have the flexibility of creating a quiz around that. Make sure over here, your expertise should be about 90 to 100%, as close to 100 as possible. And then, if your time permits, if time permits, then only move to hard questions and focus on getting let's say whatever accuracy you can. So obviously there would be some areas, if you have weakness in concepts, there would be some areas where you might be able to work on the hard questions as well and build up your accuracy over there. But in some other areas, it's possible that you have to uh, leave the hard questions. You're not able to get time for it. It's fine, but at least the first 15 questions you will get right, okay? And this is another important aspect which I wanted to talk about. So once you have worked on your concept gaps, how do you improve on the hard questions? That's the main point. How do you improve on these hard questions? The, in order to improve on these hard questions, it is important that you build the right skills, the right application skills, okay? And in order to build the right application skills or help you build the right application skills, we at GMAT will have come up with the idea of a concept booster. In fact, you will find this in every single topic. So wherever your concept gaps are, do go through these concept boosters as well. And in our concept boosters, we actually allow give you one question to solve, which is followed by a detailed methodical step-by-step -step solution using the best method. And each of these questions are basically handpicked and cover different aspect of that particular topic. So imagine that if prime numbers is tested in 10 different ways on GMAT, we will give you one variety of each of those in the concept booster, where you see the solution right away, you match your analysis with the solution, match, match your thought process with the solution and see wherever there are gaps in your application, wherever you are moving away from the right method, you can learn from that and improve. And as I said, each concept is, each concept question is handpicked and covers a different area. So in simple terms, to summarize, if you want to improve your CON50, uh, get to a CON50 score, work on areas where your concept gaps lies, get 100% accuracy in easy to medium questions, and then learn the right methodology to solve topics when you are exceeding excess time. So let's say, uh, divide the topics into two groups, less than 70%, more than 70%. If it is less than 70%, you have to work on concepts and application. If it is more than 70%, you just have to work on the application skills. And step three, practice sectional tests to make, uh, to improve your timing across difficulty levels. And remember, no mistakes are silly mistakes. Deep dive to find the root cause and focus on improving skills on each question that you solve. It's very important. Always remember quality over quantity. Okay, so that's about it. I hope this video helped you get a good idea about how to score a Quan 50 on GMAT. Uh, if you want to register for a free trial for GMATWiz, feel free to do so by going to www.gmatwiz.com. For any help related to your GMAT strategy or prep strategy, you can reach out to us on the uh, email ID mentioned here or on WhatsApp or call on this number. Thank you so much. It was great having you here.